Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm Adam Nicholas from What Culture. And coming up today, is Charlotte Flair going to challenge for a men's championship in WWE? Has backlash already been taped? And an injury update on Elias. We also have a brand new NXT Women's Champion who was crowned last night. And the new Tag Team Champions of SmackDown are set to appear on Monday Night Raw. This is the news. But we start off with that big headline story about Charlotte Flair, who, of course, spoiler alert, unfortunately lost the NXT Women's Championship last night. We'll get onto that in due course. Uh, but she's been talking to Sports Kida about potentially following in the footsteps of the likes of Tessa Blanchard and challenging for a men's championship in WWE. She heaped praise on the current Impact World Champion Tessa Blanchard, as I said there, in this interview with Sports Kida uh, and said, it's something that I want to pursue, but if you look at the big picture, when women are succeeding in different organizations all around the world, we're all succeeding and we're all winning from that. She went on to say, so for her to hold that accolade is just, we should support and be just extremely proud as a woman to see her do that because when one's doing well, we're all doing well. I couldn't be more proud and happy for what she's doing for women around the world. Uh, obviously, um, congratulations again to Tessa Blanchard. I think I think we all said at the time that was a, the right thing to do, disregarding issues on social media, let's just say. Um, but Adam Nicholas, this is sure to get the internet talking about Charlotte Flair, who's been compared to Roman Reigns on the women's side of the thing anyway, becoming Roman Reigns, basically. I can already hear angry men across the world smashing into their keyboards about how furious they're going to be about this. But to be honest, like... This is something I'm definitely behind because I think it's a shame that the, the controversy surrounding Tessa Blanchard did indeed rear their head and we had that reveal because what she was doing in uh, Impact was excellent. Everything that's happened in there with that was a fantastic route and a massive step forward for women in rest general. And it's a shame that was tarred with that, but if Charlotte Flake could go and do something similar, I think I'd be for it, you know, and Adam, just have a squash everyone. Have a squash them all, <laughs> put all the belts on her, give her more, give her double the title reigns of her dad. That'll really get someone like Jim Cornette wound up. Just completely bust, completely bust the curve. Why not? Have a beat all of your favourites: AJ Styles, <laughs> Daniel Bryan, Done. Kevin Owens. Done. Just find just all the ones, <laughs> all the ones who are slightly shorter than her, and yeah. just have them beat them all. Just a gauntlet of her beating all the internet's favourites. <laughs> no, you know what? I, I I think, you know, as much as it's going to be, yeah, like you say, bloody women! <laughs> like, a ridiculous an argument in 2020, oh. right? I, I do genuinely think this could be a nice, interesting direction for her. I mm. think probably they're going to still revisit the stuff going on in NXT for now, of course. But let's be honest, it's wide open, the story there, to be like, look, I've won everything there is to win, pretty much, in the women's division across all brands. Um, apart from maybe the tag team championships. Tag team. She needs the women's tag titles. Let's not let's keep her away from that. We're gonna get onto that in due course <laughs> as well. But yeah, have her challenge. And and obviously you would have a challenge for the WWE championship, not just like, oh, I wouldn't mind being intercontinental champion for a bit, you know. It needs to be a championship that has retained its prestige despite, you know, its history in part. Jinder Mahal. Um <laughs> so I, I can see it. Should she win it? I think that's a different conversation and it, it wholly requires, you know, forward planning and storytelling, which WWE are seemingly incapable of on the main roster at least. Um, but challenging for it, I would have, have no issue if I'm perfectly honest. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think I'd have a challenge for a belt 100% and we've already seen someone like China who took great steps in that department and I don't think it was wrong at the time then because she was a viable candidate. She was mm -hmm. that she fit the mold. I think Charlotte Flair fits the mold. Genetically superior is her gimmick, and I think that would fit as well. Let us know your thoughts on this, as if you needed any encouragement, in the <laughs> comments section below. Indeed. Well, speaking of Charlotte Flair, Adam Wilborn, as you may notice, this is all, I guess, coming off the back of the fact that she no longer is the NXT Women's Champion. Spoiler alert for anybody who wanted her to win. She didn't, but <laughs> we do have a new one. And if you don't want to know who that is, why are you watching this news right now? I don't know. But it was Io Shirai. Surprise, surprise. Got the victory last night. I know a lot of people were thinking, myself included, were thinking Charlotte was probably going to retain. That didn't happen. A great match between these three, which ended Charlotte had Rhea Ripley in the figure eight. And Io Shirai came off the top, smashed Rhea Ripley, got the full blow of a moonsault in the face, pretty much. It wasn't pretty, but either way, we got a bit of controversy, I guess. 
Shirai wins with the pinfall. Charlotte still has the figure eight locked on. I'm sure we'll find out more about that. But the important tidbit, Adam Wilborn, Io Shirai is your new NXT Women's Champion. Yeah, getting the visuals of that at the end mm. with all the, you know, Japan-esque streamers, etc. Look, looked yeah. fantastic. I was really, really happy for it. Like you say, genuinely surprised to see her uh, leave as champion. I figured Charlotte Flair would have been where I put my money and a long shot, maybe they put the title back on Rhea Ripley. But yes, yeah, so chuffed for Io Shirai. Uh, to go off as, as NXT Women's Champion. I sense that they are going to continue the feud. Charlotte Flair is going to protest that she was never pinned. Uh, you know, Rhea Ripley, it's a shame for her to having been defeated again. But I, I think she's still a, a sensational wrestler and someone who can quite easily be re-elevated back to the uh, main event. Speaking of which, the women main evented for the first time in a long, long time um, in NXT. What did you make of the, the card on the whole? The card on the whole, I enjoyed... Well, to be honest, I thought everybody put a decent performance on the night. I think I have to lower the expectations because we're in the the no no fans era, or whatever you want to call it, the mm -hmm. empty arena era. Uh, technically, still, I guess. Um, the only one that really sort of I felt let down by overall was the um, the Adam Cole Velveteen Dream Match because. Uh, they, they try to get creative with it, but I think sometimes when you've been given too much free reign, it can have an effect because they don't know where the limit is and then you try to add too much and it gets oversaturated. And it wasn't helped by the fact that I imagine more people were complaining about not being able to see things in this match than that one episode of Game of Thrones where everybody went mad <laughs> about it. It was, it's always tough doing matches in the dark and when you have moving cameras and huge bright spotlights that kind of contrast it really badly. I think a lot of people were not unhappy, but disappointed is probably the word for that match. Yeah, exactly. I think I'm glad Adam Cole didn't lose his championship mm. in that scenario. I'm astonished that they didn't have a click purple uh, headlight sec section. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> I, um, I, yeah, I'm agree. I agree. I'm slightly disappointed with that. Uh, I thought Johnny Gargano getting pounced through the plexiglass was amazing. Brilliant. Really, and really good. I just carrying cross is oh. terrifying. They've done such a good job with him. Like such a good job, in my opinion. And he's. He, everything that I want from him, he's delivered, basically. Mm. Uh, they've, they've made a new star for me, and I think it's nice to see them taking something from elsewhere, like they did with Bobby Roode. A lot of people thought Bobby Roode, when he went into NXT, might not have been as big a deal. Mm. They made him a big deal, we got behind him, and it worked. Karrion Cross, coming from a similar background, pulled him from somewhere else, and have just put some investment in him, Willborn. It's not complicated. Give these guys a proper presentation, make them feel big, and the fans will buy into it. And they certainly have done that with Carry and Cross. Yeah, and we should give also give credit to uh, to Finn Balor and Damien Priest who had an excellent match as well. Well worth checking out. It's only two and a half hours. Go and check it out on the network. It really and is. It, let's a great give a shout out as well to the six six women tag match yeah. too. That was great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right, let's look ahead uh, from last night's pay-per-view to next weekend's pay-per-view, WWE Backlash. We saw it reported on this on the pa uh, a little bit in the past, uh, but confirmed reports now. Sean Ross of Fightful Select reporting that WWE have taped uh, a lot, if not all, of WWE Backlash. Apparently, oh, this Sunday was a busy old day for that <laughs> NXT crowd. Uh, they were in in the morning to film Backlash. Then they went over to do uh, TakeOver Live. Of course, no word yet on any sort of cinematic matches uh, at Backlash. I can't think of any matches just off the top of my head that kind of merit it right now. Um, but interesting that, yeah, this Sunday's pay-per-view won't be live. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? Because I guess it makes it... Well, I tell you what it does do. It makes it... just shows you how much commitment there is to keeping all this stuff under wraps as much as possible. Because I don't think we've had too many. I know that's been a suggestion of one or two little uh, leaks that have gone on. But it must be a nightmare from filming it to try and keep all of that under wraps without giving it away before the pay-per-views. But um, I guess it makes sense, doesn't it? It's If they can do that and keep everybody... Everybody exposed that stuff to a minimum, then taping stuff well and ahead of time is probably the way to go, isn't it? Yeah, I think we've reported in the past how intensive WWE's taping schedules are, which on the one hand is, you know, kind of awful for the NXT talent who just have to stand up for know, 12 man. hours on end. But having said that, to balance the safety of the performers as much as they possibly can in this scenario, I think uh, having them just sort of do bulk tapings is the best thing. And also, we haven't mentioned this before, but shout out to Nikki Cross, who I think bought all of the NXT crowd pizzas for just being there, which is nice. Oh, wow, that's nice. Good of her. Nice work, nice work, Nikki Cross. 
I'd appreciate that if I was stood there for that long, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, speaking of Nikki Cross, let's do a bit of transitioning here into the NXT, not the NXT, the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Women's Champion scene. Now, for anybody who watched SmackDown at the weekend, you will have seen that we have new tag team champions in Sasha Banks and Bailey. Huzzah, the belts back where they belong? Question not yet, mark, not question yet. mark, Adam Wilborn. <laughs> I'll leave that with you. However, we will be getting the treat of the new SmackDown tag team champions, the women, of course, on Monday Night Raw tonight. They are turning up for a segment. I guess they're just going to be the most gloating tag team champions of all time, as you can imagine. But could we potentially be setting something up? Adam Wilborn or just an appearance to kind of rile the crowd up. Either way, I don't care because Bailey and Sasha Banks are going to be on Monday Night Raw with the belts being arseholes. It's going to be great. Yeah, putting all my bias to one side for a brief second if I can. <laughs> uh, you know, a congratulations to Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I thought they did really well with the tag team titles yeah. as much as they were allowed to. But it just, it feeds that Bailey sasha story so much. Not only now have you got the SmackDown Women's Championship, which hopefully things are all going to disintegrate so they can face it off against each other properly at SummerSlam, but you've got the catalyst for all that with the tag titles. You saw a little bit of it in that match on SmackDown where basically Bailey was like, get the bloody hell out of the ring, I can do your moves, Sasha, I'll do it, don't worry. <laughs> uh, then of course they went on to win the titles. Um, great stuff. Now I'm going to bring that bias right back front and centre, because <laughs> Tonight, I think there's going to be an iconic interruption. I think it is set up perfectly. Uh, I've seen Hamlet talking about this. I hope it's set up for a potential... Well, it would seem you'd have to have a triple threat match, really, I'd say, mm. for those tag titles, because it just wouldn't really work, you know, basically, in thinking WWE-wise. Sasha Banks and Bayley versus the, the Iconics, who are new, like gits basically even more so than they used to be you can't really have that so i think you're probably going to have uh sasha and bailey being like you say unbearable tonight then out come alexa and nikki who say we want our rematch and the iconics come out and say well we beat you last week or we've beaten you one on one in one-on-one -on -one competition maybe there's some sort of match to, to qualify for that Hopefully a triple threat, and hopefully Sunday we have the greatest wrestling match ever, and that is the Iconics regaining those tag team titles. I'm going to let you have this one. I'm not even going to try and dethrone it from your little throne of happiness there. I'm going to let you go with it. What I will say is, having seen the picture of Sasha and Bailey with all the gold oh. and that magnificent little callback to them crying or pretending to cry while doing a photo shoot with the belts, obviously the little dig, maybe something that's going to lean into tonight's storyline. Top stuff for me, big fan of it all. Yeah, I think I think Hampton has pointed out on, on numerous occasions that you know the, the, the initial disintegration of Sasha and Bailey last mm. year, of course, was when they got hit by a big move by someone and then the Iconics came in and stole the pin and the titles. Copy, paste, backlash, please. Yeah, I heard and they were just, legal. I heard they were legal, weren't they? They were legal. Someone <laughs> spotted that anyway. Uh, finally, just an update on Elias. Uh, of course, he was involved in that Jeff Hardy, Sheamus crash storyline on SmackDown. Uh, and that is apparently to cover up the fact he has a torn pectoral muscle. That means he's going to be out of action for months. Uh, a shame that, but probably, I always say this, and I always do. hate to you say it at the same time. always say this. <laughs> probably the best thing for his character, though, because he's been, you know, pushed off platforms and just sort of fannied about with his guitar since he uh, has been, you know, more heavily featured on SmackDown. So have him go off for a while, come back with an actual storyline, perhaps. Well, yes, or he could just be in a match in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and try and soldier on through it with his other three good mates and put on an absolute stink of a show. I don't know, that's one thing he could do, but I guess, I guess technically, I guess technically it is the best thing for him. You know, he's like, he's a guy who's obviously got a lot of potential, but at the minute, nothing much happening, so nothing the matter but going away for a bit, coming back, revitalized and refreshed, hopefully. And I, I always think, think Elias is so jacked as well, man. There's yeah. obviously a star there and he can go, but he just doesn't really get the shot, does he? I'll tell you what, what pops up on my recommended YouTube videos yesterday, that him, clip of him and uh, Kevin Owens getting booed out of the building for eight solid minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to that kind of heat, please. Wonderful stuff. I mean, obviously, we can't have it right now. Six NXT people going, boo. But, you know, you get what I mean. A mm. few months away. Get well soon, of course, Elias, and hopefully we'll see him back on WWE programming very soon. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. Uh, at WhatCultureWWE, of course. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, first question today comes from 
Jason Sawatka, who says, What happens to Shayna Baszler? Does creative just not have anything for her? With Becky gone, don't you guys think it's time to push someone new instead of throwing Charlotte back into the mix for the 20th time? Of course, it's Nia versus Asuka uh, backlash. Do you reckon she's maybe waiting in the wings for after that? It's a hard one, this, isn't it? Because obviously a huge bias about anybody who watches NXT will know Shayna Baszler is fantastic and she really should she should have been crowned at Wrestlemania for me I think that would have been the move uh, especially given the fact that Becky we didn't know that but Becky mm. was going to give up the belt um, I, I think Vince has got it in his bonnet hasn't he when this happens with certain performers there was that one uh, build up I guess the match that didn't really tick the box for him wasn't it Elimination Chamber mm. where he didn't really feel like the fans were into Shayna and buying into her and I think that's kind of maybe he's put a little black mark next to her name and Vince can't seem to get rid of it. She's going to have to do a lot. To be honest, though, I'd rather see her disappearing for a bit like she has and waiting in the wings, as you say, than get squashed at any point like, and have that like mystique and aura that she has and real genuine killer nature taken away from her. Yeah, we talked about this a fair bit. You know, she came in, she won that triple threat of Survivor Series, which was kind of disappointing, although not necessarily her fault. Mm. Then Vince kind of changed his mind and said, you know what, let's have Charlotte win the Royal Rumble rather than Shayna, which kind of took all the air out of the balloon. Then you had that Elimination Chamber, which, like you say, was rather divisive. Phil and I were doing a live stream for that, and we were like, this is amazing, this is perfect. And then people in the comments were like, no. So I don't know what, <laughs> I still, I will never ever get my head around how you didn't think that that was the right thing, a star making performance for Shayna Baszler, mm. just murdering everyone in the Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Then obviously, as you mentioned, uh, WrestleMania happened. Happened. Money in the bank. I doubt that fans even remember she was kind of involved in that, if I'm honest. I think, yeah, just take her away for a back, take her away for a while. Then, after you've gone through uh, Nia Jax, uh, have Asuka. Uh, it's a little extreme rules after that. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have her face Shayna there because I feel like this is a bit of like get out of jail free cards, although they may just do that just to make this feud roll on a bit longer. Mm -hmm. I'd have Shayna just come in and go, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to have you at SummerSlam. Do you remember what I did to you in the Elimination Chamber? That's going to happen again. And I think that's the perfect build to a potential SummerSlam, he SummerSlam headline match, whether or not Vince will let that happen. Yeah, you hope so. You hope she can get us to take head of steam back that she had from NXT because she is genuinely that good. She's a killer. I know they've kind of forced her to do more promos that is maybe with their spin on it, which has been a bit cheesier and a bit less what she is and obviously who could forget her being Dracula on her debut of course <laughs> but still there's still time and fingers crossed it works out for Shayna Yeah, there's, there's occasional flashes of, of what we could, what we remember from her obviously not just in the ring but when Becky was now she was pregnant <laughs> she only went <laughs> how dumb can you be I was like <laughs> I love you. All uh, right, second question today comes from Mike on the mic, who says, with rumours of Velveteen Dream heading to Raw or SmackDown, who do you feel is next to face Adam Cole for the NXT Championship? Do you feel that someone from Raw or SmackDown could challenge Cole like AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, or Seth Rollins? I'm going to keep this one short and sweet because I've been banging this drum for a while. Finn Balor is the man for the job. And if anything, he might even be the man to dethrone him, in my opinion, because that was the whole reason he went back to NXT. Put the man, put the belt back on him. See that new belt on Finn Balor's waist. Oh, mwah. Yes, yeah, please. I, I agree. I think you've had, he's had so many different distractions and things he's had to deal with. Mm. I know, obviously, there was the Walter stuff teased. You can still revisit that. Imagine yeah. having some sort of champion versus champion match. I think that'd be spectacular. Um... But yeah, I completely agree. Finn Balor is the man for me. Um, and I also, watching watching TakeOver this morning, thought once Keith Lee beat Gargano, oh God, Timothy Thatcher's going to murder Keith Lee, isn't he? <laughs> well, there's, there's that potential road that can go down. They do have options, of course. Balor's obviously the one for me. But I think also they've really kind of pushed Dexter Loomis, haven't they? Weirdly, he's like being thrust up towards this undisputed era botherer. And I got a feeling that might that may end up being another direction to go to, at least to try and tie things over until they've got time to put on the match they actually want. Yeah. Don't care about that match. I don't <laughs> get it. I do not get this. I don't get it. Don't get it whatsoever. But yeah, if they want to go in that direction. Uh, to be fair, I popped on his appearance in the back lot brawl. So. Uh, final question today comes from Jay Gorman, who says, I've seen the reports that Brock may be coming back soon. Possibly around SummerSlam. Yeah, that's what we reported a while back. Maybe there's a triple threat or a Lashler. Oh, no, La <laughs> Lashler. A Lashley Lesnar storyline. What do you reckon? I think oh, 
I don't know what to say on this one. Brock Lesnar is always going to be back. Whenever you don't want him to be, he's always going to be back. Especially for SummerSlam, Vince wants his draws there. And whether you like it or not, Brock Lesnar is a draw. Nice to have a little bit of time without him. Are we going to get to see that big, big boy match that we never got between those two? It would not surprise me in the slightest. Although he might end up coming back to try and knock on Drew's door again. Who knows? Yeah, I don't really want to see him in another title match as much as mm. Vince thinks he's a draw. I really like that idea. Just just two big bastards beating yeah. the crap out of each other. Or, since I dubbed them Lashner, make them tag, tag teams and just oh, see what God. happens. God, no. Can you imagine that? Brock is the tag champs and he's just never on telly. <laughs> That's just street profits in the back of your going, <laughs> we've been doing like decathlons and stuff. Are you kidding me? I tell you uh, what, there's one for you. Bring Brock Lesnar back so Charlotte Flair can squash him in a match. <laughs> How about that? Hey, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Oh dear, right, let's move on to today's and finally, and more just sort of self-indulgence here from myself and uh, Adam Nicholas rather than anything important to tell you about. Uh, of course, it was NXT TakeOver in your house, as we said last night, a uh, wonderful throwback feel to it all, and massive shout out to MVP of the night, the man who allegedly was trending worldwide on Twitter, <laughs> Todd Pettengill. Get him back in WWE full-time, Adam Nicholas. Oh, it was lovely this, wasn't it? This was... It was as dumb as you thought it should be, by the way. Not That's not a criticism at all. It was meant to be dumb. It was a throwback. Him blending the things that he used to do with the very different era that we're in now was amazing. Everything, that, that all the time they put into this, just the little things. I know some people thought it was cheesy. I disagree. I think it was meant to be cheesy. It was meant to be nostalgic. And I love, I love also just a little shout out to William Regal announcing all those adverts before they came on as well in such a stupid, over the top fashion. When was the last time you heard William Regal say anything louder than a whisper? <laughs> the whole thing was great. Todd Pettenkill, for me, if he's going to produce like that, Adam Wilborn, he can come on every week. Exactly. What was it? Ico Pro. Ico Rick, Pro. Of course. Rick Bugs eating ice cream sandwich things, mm -hmm. and then and then Todd Pettengill being talked about everywhere from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and your personal favourite, Adam Nicholas. AOL chat, I believe, is the answer to that one. <laughs> well, but whatever you do, though, don't call the one nine hundred number because that is disconnected. <laughs> What a legend. Let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And subscribe to What Called Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Uh, but also you can let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Watch there. You can follow both of us. You can follow Adam Nicholas at... It's Adam Nicholas. You can also follow Adam Wilborn at... Adam Wilborn. You can follow us all at What Culture WWE, as I said. But for now, my thanks, Adam Nicholas. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon. <laughs>